So it's like giving up something that we esteem to be valuable to someone that we believe is worthy of that valuable thing. You know, that is what um, sacrifice entails. Um, But the meaning of obedience, it is the art or practice of obeying. And to obey is to go in the direction of a command or instruction. It is aligning yourself to what someone else has said or declared, a rule or a command or an instruction that someone has given to us. And us obeying that person, aligning to what that person has spoken and talked about, that is obedience, right? Um, Hi, welcome back to another episode of the Honey and Milk podcast. I am Bernie Stada, your host. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you're new here, sit down, get comfortable. This place is one of the coolest places to be at because we get to sit with the Holy Ghost to learn more about Jesus, the living word. And we learn more about him through our experiences as well as the word of God, the the scriptures, the Bible. Um, Yeah. So today's topic is going to be obedience is better than sacrifice. That is gotten from Samuel 15 verse 22. So I'm going to read that out in the Amplified Version. Samuel said, Has the Lord as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obedience to the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. So before, um, this was the time that uh, the Is- Israel was about to go to war, and they were under the rulership of King Saul and Samuel the prophet was the prophet at that time and um, Saul King Saul in his haste he was meant to so then Samuel was the one to offer up sacrifices um, especially if they were going out for wars and battles and all that and King Saul in his haste decided to offer up the sacrifices in order for things to like move faster, go faster into battle and win and get the victory and all that. But that was being disobedient to what God had commanded. So after Samuel got to the place, at the time that he got to the place, after Saul had already offered up the sacrifices, I think in the Bible it says like a little while after Saul did that, Samuel appeared. And this was the remark that Samuel gave to Saul. That is it that to better, sorry, to obey um, and to heed to the word and the command of the Lord is better than sacrifice. Um, But before we move ahead, let's say what is sacrifice? So a definition of sacrifice is that it is an act of giving up something valued for the sake of something else regarded as more important or worthy. So it's like giving up something that we esteem to be valuable to someone that we believe is worthy of that valuable thing. You know, that is what um, sacrifice entails. Um, But the meaning of obedience, it is the art or practice of obeying. And to obey is to go in the direction of a command or instruction. It is aligning yourself to what someone else has said or declared, a rule or a command or an instruction that someone has given to us, and us obeying that person, aligning to what that person has spoken and talked about, that is obedience, right? Uh, And from this remark of Samuel, it shows that sacrifice is pleasing to God. It is not that God um, despises sacrifices, no, but there is a priority list to this stuff. This reminds me of the story of the Pharisees where Jesus was speaking to them and he was like, um, in Matthew 23, 23, the Amplified Version, I'm just paraphrasing it now. It says, for you give a tenth and but have neglected the weightier provisions of the law. But these are the primary things you ought to have done without neglecting the others. So it's like how you have a curriculum and you have primary subjects that you need to work with. But then in you now leave those and then you do the extracurricular activities. It's like maybe you're in a you're in school 
and you have sports as extracurricular activity and you excel at sports, but then you're failing in math, you're failing in English, you're failing in biology, and you want to go ahead and be a biologist, a doctor. So yes, you're excelling in sports. Yes, that's a great thing. But you are missing or leaving outside the primary things. You can't, you have to first excel in math and biology and then excel as well in sports. So that is what sacrifice is in comparison to obedience. And um, sacrifice is pleasing to God, but obedience is the heart issue. It is the issue of the heart. (laughs) I think there's a phrase that goes that the matter of the heart is the no what (laughs) so if i find it i'll definitely put it down um as a quote but it's like the heart of the matter is a matter of the heart that was the quote (laughs) yeah that's the quote the matter of the heart is the heart no the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart that was the phrase um and that is what obedience is Just as tithe and justice was prioritized by Jesus, so also is sacrifice and obedience prioritized by God, found from the remark of Samuel here. And there are other instances in the Bible where in the offering up of many things, God was more interested in the obedience and in the heart alignment of his people rather than sacrifice. So, um as well as with anything in the Bible, the whole point of this podcast is to learn more about Jesus. And Jesus is the perfect example and the role model of everything we speak about or found in the Bible. So now we're going to talk about Jesus. How did Jesus obey and sacrifice? You know, Um, What was his outlook on obedience and what was his outlook on sacrifice? As he, him dying on the cross, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ was sacrifice. However, was it also in obedience to God? For that, we'll look at a few verses. Hebrew 5 verse 8. I won't read that out. Um, it shows that Jesus, that as he was alive, he obeyed and even learned obedience. So this is like a little bit of what the next episode is going to be about, the journey of a be- of the journey of learning basically. And in Hebrews 5 verse 8 to show that Jesus did indeed obey, he even learned obedience. It was a journey of him learning to obey as well as also being obedient throughout his whole life. And then we go to 1 John 2 verse 2 and it shows that Jesus sacrificed all of him. The exemplary leadership of Jesus fully demonstrates the completion of obedience and sacrifice. So um, I go back again to the greatest sacrifice of Jesus, where he gave all of himself, even unto death. It was his crucifixion. He was not only crucified, but he was also pers- like um, tortured as well. He was beaten. He was spat on. He was ridiculed and mocked. Um, so There was a lot that Jesus sacrificed for us, but if I dare say that if that sacrifice, however great and wonderful that sacrifice was, if it was not in obedience to God, it would have been, it wouldn't have left the impact that it did. It wouldn't have delivered us the way it has. It wouldn't have been as victorious as it it is, you know. The crucifixion of Christ was also in obedience to God. We see that when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And even in that moment, he was praying to God. He was like, Lord, you know, if this cup can pass from me, but not as I will, but rather as you will. He was still praying in that moment to find the the ability to align to what God has instructed. That is in the very definition of what we have defined obedience to be, that is obedience. God, Jesus was obeying. The 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 sacrifice of him giving himself was in obedience to God. And that shows the priority of our sacrifices. So, um, yeah, <laughs> that shows the priority of our sacrifices. And some of the sacrifices that we do, um, give to the God to some of the sacrifices that we do give to God 
it is it can end up not being a delight to God. Another example is about Cain and Abel. That is also a rather popular example in the Bible of sacrifice, of how Abel's sacrifice was accepted, but Cain's sacrifice was not accepted. And in, sorry, and then in that, what the response of God to Cain in that moment, he says, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? Cain's sacrifice, if done in obedience to what God wanted, to the righteousness of God, to the alignment of what God has instructed, if Cain had gone back and done that sacrifice again in obedience to God, his sacrifice would have been accepted. There wouldn't have been the first murder <laughs> of history. He wouldn't have found reason to kill his brother. But in his pride and in his stubbornness, in still wanting to be disobedient to God, he then further went into sin. Um, he went, yeah, he went further into sin and killed Abel. And um, yeah, we like afterwards, the blood of Abel demanded justice for what was done to thus what, what was done to Abel. And we see further that Cain was cursed because of it. And yeah. I'm not going to dive into that. I'm just trying to dive into the fact that as much as we want to sacrifice to God, as much as, um, so some of the sacrifices in our time now, you know, in the new covenant with Christ as priests and as kings, um, due to the sacrifice and the new covenant that Jesus brought in with his death and resurrection, some of the sac sacrifices that we do now is a sacrifice of prayer, um, sacrifice in our times, sacrifice of praise, um, worship, and um, also offerings, you know, of first fruits, tithes, all of that. We still have those sacrifices now. But one of the things that um, we need to balance as Christians is that Above all those sacrifices, you can't pray for two hours and then be like, okay, I've sacrificed. Now God has to move in my behalf. No, obedience is the priority. Live your life in obedience to what the word of the Lord says. In that um, the commandments of the Lord, the greatest is love the Lord with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength and everything, you know. So you have to move in alignment and in obedience with the word of God, with the commandments of the Lord, with the instructions of God, with the will of God. Also, general instructions as a Christian, that is being um, submit yourself one to another, um, children obey your parents as um, in the Lord. You have a lot of instructions already in the Bible. But apart from those ones, we also tend to have personal um, commandments as well, personal instructions. So when the Lord tells you, like Abraham, go to so 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 and so place, you know, take up your bag and move, and then you don't obey, you don't obey for whatever reason, and then you're still in that spot in in disobedience, and you have not repented as well, and you're now offering up prayer. You're offering up praise like everything is fine not when you know that you have disobeyed what the Lord has said or maybe you live in sexual impurity and you know for a fact that this is one of the commandments in the Bible and you want to praise and pray like everything is fine without asking God for um, repentance without repenting and to repent means to turn away from what you were doing before so if you were disobedient before, turn away from it and become obedient. Be obedient to the word of the Lord. And in your obedience, your sacrifices will come up to him as a pleasant fragrance, you know. That is when our sacrifices are pleasing to the Lord. That is when we are to offer up sacrifices and he will be delighted in them. And yeah, so the whole point of today's topic is to be summarized in this obedience is better than sacrifice it is better that you obey and not sacrifice than for you to sacrifice and not obey it is better for you to live your life out trying to adhere and align to the word of god than doing all the extra frills and thinking you're fine you're not fine 
Obedience matters to God. Obedience is a heart matter that God is very interested in. He wants us to be obedient to him because even in our obedience, sometimes we want to paint God out to be this kind of very mean God, um, like dictator sort of thing that, oh, why must we be obedient to him? But if you look at each and every command that he gives it is still for our own good it is still for our own benefit you know we get to benefit from it when he tells us to be sexually pure it is for our own good in order to bypass getting stds from places that you don't even know on people you don't even know even people that you do know sometimes even having um soul ties with people that you know um, maybe you say, okay, it's just this one person I've slept with all my life. And yes, we've known each other from back when, and you guys are not married. Then you're going to start a system or a pattern that is going to carry on not only from you, but also from the children you're going to have in those homes. There's a reason why God ordained marriage and the system of marriage. And he placed certain rules and commandments for that to also efficiently work as well, that we get to benefit from as a family, as an individual, as a society. This goes as well with governance. You know, he tells us to lead diligently, to lead as, um, uh, like to lead and serve, like to leave in, to lead in servitude, basically. And then he tells us that are under the governance to obey authorities and to you know adhere to the laws and the rules of our governors that makes the whole system of governance a lot easier than stressing everybody out <laughs> so it, all the commandments of god still points us to like still is for our own benefit so whenever we say okay or rather whenever someone says obey the lord fear the Lord, all of that. We tend to paint it as if God is this sort of di dictator, but actually he's not. He really, really cares for us. He loves us. There's a reason why each and everything that he has said was said. Everything that he, yeah, everything that he has said, that there's a reason why it was said. And it also shows like sometimes we, it's also a thing of our own self as well. <laughs> So now there's like a little bit of my own experience into that because it it has its its extremes. There is an extreme of pride where um, we feel we're in right standing with God because we prayed for 16 hours or we, I don't know, gave all of the money in our accounts or something like that um, in order to present a worthy offering to God. And... I'm speaking about the extreme where you sacrifice a lot and you think out of that sacrifice you are righteous or you stand um, right with God when you have blatantly um, disobeyed his word. So it's like you, it's like stories where you maybe give a pastor a very large amount of money and the pastor says, okay, I'll pray for you, you are going to enter into heaven. And that is not going to happen because the word of the Lord says that you have to work out your own salvation. You have to believe in Jesus Christ, say it out, believe in your heart, and also work out your own salvation. There is nobody that's going to pray for you or pray you into heaven. That is you wanting to allow your sacrifice equals to, equal, or rather, equal to obedience, and then yeah, the Lord already says that your righteousness is like filthy rags before him. <laughs> so it is only the righteousness of Christ that can keep us in right standing before God. That is one extreme. Thinking our sacrifices um, equates to obedience. And then the other extreme is, um, is thinking because we have not sacrificed anything that it means that we are disobedient to God. Um, and it's this thing where maybe you start to compare yourself. I think it's still from pride, to be honest. I think it's actually still from pride, but it's the kind of subtle pride that makes you feel like 
you're less than. So I see a hint of pride whenever we overestim our uh, esteem ourselves, and I see a bit of pride when we also underestim ourselves, because it's like God has already told you that you stand right with Him, but then you're like, no, God, I know what you said, but <laughs> I know what you said, but like I have not. You know, you start to compare yourself with this person said he has been praying for eight hours and all you can do is pray for 30 minutes. And you take that 30 minutes very seriously and you try your best and you you do it because you want to enjoy the presence of the Lord more. But then because you're not doing as much as other people, you start to make your you start to think that oh you're disobedient and you're disobedient and like you're not right with God when actually you try your best, you do your best, you allow the grace of God and you allow the Holy Spirit to take you each and every day in right standing with God. Immediately you see something else off, you repent for your sins. But because you are not giving out your whole bank account or because you are not praying for 16 hours, you're like, okay, then I must definitely be out of tune with God. That is one, and the other extreme of it. And it is us feeling that obedience I don't know how to phrase this, actually. I really don't know how to phrase it. <laughs> I don't know how to phrase it. But basically, I'll give you the example. And that is what I see in the two extremities of this. In everything, we need to create a balance. We need to balance our obedience and we need to balance our sacrifice. Sacrifices are... are it's, a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to sacrifice unto the Lord. And it's... But it's a better thing. Yeah, that would be the best way I would say it. <laughs> it's a good thing to sacrifice unto the Lord, unto the Lord. But it is a better thing to obey the Lord. Yeah, that would be the way I would describe it. <laughs> All right. Then um, on that note, we're done for today. This is the end of today's episode. Um, so let's bow ahead in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to sit with you, to get to know you better, to get to understand you more. Lord, I pray for every single person that comes across this video, that you help us to gain the balance of obedience and sacrifice, for us to understand that to obey you is the better of, of our lives. To obey you is better than sacrifice. Help us to be patient. Help us to wait on your word. Help us to walk according to your word, O oh Lord, and to obey, obey you above everything, but also to open up our hearts and our, and our lives and to sacrifice all that we have to you, just as Jesus sacrificed all that he had unto you for our sakes. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. All right, then. Um, don't forget to leave a like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Honey and Milk Podcast. You can write me an email at hi.b at honeyandmilk.org. <laughs> All right. And then take care of yourself. Bye.